Happy Easter, folks. Welcome back to the Food for the Faithful channel with this guy, your reluctant prophet. The following are my thoughts regarding the smelly, petty orthodoxies held to be social gospel on this weekend when we remember why there is a Christian gospel, and particularly on this Easter Sunday when we look to the completed work of the cross for healing. So let us consider the following. On the unity of the Spirit, which we are called to maintain, from Ephesians 4. Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, be diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led captive the captives, and he gave gifts to the people. Now this expression, he ascended, what does it mean except that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is himself also he who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. And he gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. There is no such thing in the New Testament church as sitting in a pew and listening to one man render a sermon and not participating in the act of worship other than sitting and listening and standing up and sitting down and singing when commanded. This is not how the early church functioned. So for the equipping of the saints, for the ministry, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried out by every wind of doctrine by the trickery of people, by craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, that is Christ, from whom the body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, not just some of the joints, but every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. How Christians ought to walk since the original biblical name for Christianity is called the way. And I continue to read from the same chapter. So I say this and affirm in the Lord that you are to no longer walk just as the Gentiles also walked in the futility of their minds being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, have given themselves up to indecent behavior for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. But you did not learn Christ in that, that way, in this way. This is why we're seeing trannies twerking in front of little children. It is because of the perverse doctrine that they hold to. And I'll get on with that in a moment. If indeed you have heard him and has been taught in him, just as truth is in Christ, that in reference to your former way of life, you had to rid yourself, yourselves of the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the loss of deceit. So lust is always hidden in deceit. It is a deceitful lie. 
And what do we do to counter it? Be renewed in the spirit of our minds and to put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Therefore, ridding yourselves of falsehood, speak truth to each one of you with his neighbor, because we are parts of one another. Be angry, and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not give the devil an opportunity. The one who steals must no longer steal, but he, rather he must labor, producing with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with the one who is in need. Let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth, but if there is any good word for edification, according to the need of the moment, say that, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander must be removed from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, compassion, compassionate, forgiving, each other, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Amen. That's from Ephesians 4. And now my thoughts. The rejection of God in sound doctrine does not rid man of religion. It merely guarantees that what he believes is apostasy. So you who claim you don't want to be placed in a culturally, legally, scientifically, and morally defined category... Your ideology has created an ideological category which literally does not exist. Cultural Marxist critical theory has become the prevailing social dogma. Although it is still based on the dialectical materialism of Marx and Engels, critical theory has rewritten the essential premise of the proletariat rising to overthrow the bourgeoisie. The new ideology of critical theory pits the intersectionally oppressed against the patriarchal tyranny of society itself. Which is why, under the influence of postmodern Marxist ideology, we are being taught in our schools, by our government, and many so-called liberal churches to hate our ancestors, loathe our culture, and loathe ourselves for being guilty of committing the original sin of creating what is arguably the most prosperous and free society which have ever existed. This is Satan's counterfeit, where guilt is no longer based upon the original sin we inherited from Adam and our personal moral failings. Instead, individual guilt has been reassigned to collective guilt and it is placed onto society. Subtitle, When Society Rejects the Foundation of Christ and Sound Doctrine. The greatest achievement of critical theory's disciples has been to march through every single institution required to maintain a function civil, functional civil society and twist them into a hideous counterfeit of the great buttresses of freedom they once were, including the academy, the church, and the government. My word of warning and admonition to the church, sound doctrine and teaching matters. No competent physician places the symptoms of the illness he is treating above the need to treat the illness itself. Many Christians are currently publicly re rebuking the sin resulting from the broad acceptance of critical theory without understanding the origins of this spiritual apostasy. I laud the fact they are condemning the sin. However, I am astounded that so many of them are unaware of the source of the spiritual apostasy. Until these truly godless and perverse beliefs are exposed and countered with sound doctrine, the sin resulting from this apostasy will proceed unabated. From 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. season. Reprove, rebu rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. God bless you on this Easter Sunday when we remember that we were crucified in him and raised up to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. These are things to think and pray about, to talk to your family and friends about, to discuss the origin of this apostasy 
that has taken over modern social discourse. Have a great day.